uh, now after all these efforts we got finally the government of india act of 1935 so we are aware i am revising again that particularly in 20th century we got 1909 that is called as morley minto reforms 1919 that is called as montagu chemsford reform and then we were awaiting for next reform actually as we discussed in earlier lecture that next reform should be there in 1929 uh, according to montagu chemsford reform because 10 years they were decided that uh, we have to keep it and we have to check the impact of that whatever reforms are there so in 1919 they given us uh, reforms after that supposed to be in 29 but the labor party that was there in england they were intended that we should give that reforms earlier way and in 1927 uh, only they send a commission that is called as simon commission to get overview of the impact of the reforms given in 1919 but as we shown black flag to them then lord burkan head said something and we presented nehru report then it was round table conference and uh, sorry round table conferences total three round table conferences and after all this result when hitler got power in germany that is in 1933 then only britishers given us reforms that is 1935 now these reforms were a fantastic piece of diplomacy say they had given us variety of things as per our demand but at the same time the first partition of india during british rule was carried out in this reform okay please keep in mind Uh, i am telling first partition of india during british rule that was carried out in this uh, reform uh, myanmar that was actually called as brahmadesh sanskrit name is brahmadesh uh, britishers were not able to pronounce this high class language and so corrupted word as burma so during british rule this nation was called as burma and in latter phase now it is renamed as myanmar by their own people so we have to respect obviously myanmar but during british rule what they were calling this as burma so burma was separated from india say earlier days 1905 try to recollect in history part we discuss lord curzon uh, carried out partition of bengal province but keep in mind that partition was inside india bengal was not given as separate status or east bengal is separate nation west bengal is separate nation like that no they were provinces under control of india only and so we should not consider that as partition of india intended for that only but not now whereas here myanmar was separated from india according to 1935s act and the most important thing what our lord ram prabhu ramachandra not able to do that because of his greatness that after defeating ravan bibhishan was appointed on the throne of lanka it was not that uh, lord ram conquered lanka and annexed out to his own empire no so this was greatness of indian people at that time but uh, in uh, modern world britishers uh, conquered lanka also they were calling that nation as ceylon may be possible corrupted word of sri lanka so they were calling that as ceylon ceylon was part of india but according to 1935 act ceylon was separated from india so this is partition apart from that one more point is there now uh, i can say brahmadesh yes indian culture is there name indicate brahmadesh religion most of the people followed buddhism connectivity yes with india but uh, one other part that is called as eden now if you want to see this you have to see world map in world map you have to focus on arabian peninsula uh, there is 
conjunction of Red Sea and Gulf of Aden. At that point, there is a point that is called as Aden. That uh, city port. Now, Aden was strategically important, and therefore Britishers kept control over Aden. But for administrative purpose, Aden was connected to India. That is connected to Bombay Province. Uh, at that time, Bombay. Now we are calling as Mumbai. So it was connected with Bombay Province at that time. Uh, that's why, if you are aware, that the first armed revolutionist after 1857 revolt, his name is uh, Vasudev Balwant Phadke. When he was arrested, he was deported from India and kept in the jail at Eden because Eden was part under control of Bombay Presidency at that time. But not in India directly, it is in Arabian Peninsula. But according to 1935's Act, Eden was also separated from Bombay Presidency, Bombay Province. So like that, the partition of India was carried out. I should not consider Eden as part of India at that time also. But uh, Sri Lanka and uh, Myanmar, they were parts of, Myanmar means Brahmadesh, they were parts of India during British rule and this is the most important thing carried out by uh, India Act, Government of India Act of 1935. Now internal partitions also carried out, this is external partition means what nation is separated. Uh, now internal partition, Bombay province was fragmented and Sindh territory which was part of Bombay province that was separated from Bombay province and new province was created that is Sindh. Same way Northwest Frontier Region, today it is in Pakistan. If you observe map of Pakistan, then Peshawar, Swat Valley, all this part that is called as Wajiristan also. So that Wajiristan or Pakturistan, Khyber Pakhtunwala, like that names are there. That was called as Northwest Frontier Region at that time. So Northwest Frontier Region was separated from uh, Punjab territory. So like that, instead of eight, 11 provinces were created in India. This is the vast, we can say, making of provinces. Britishers were, uh, what we can say, having the foresight. If at all, World War is having failure from British side, then what we can do? Say they were aware that Japan is going to attack over British Empire because Japanese people were having very good uh, ideology at that time. They were intending that Asia for Asian people. These Europeans should not influence or interfere in Asian matter. Fantastic idea. Today also actually we have to follow that. That the dispute between China and India should be solved by India and China only. No outsider should allow to interfere there. So like that things are there. Uh, anyway, but uh, Japanese tendency was there at that time they were saying that Asia for Asian people. To the surprise, Japanese people or Japan uh, joined Axis Pact which was signed by uh, or actually the pact between Germany that is Nazi Germany of Hitler and uh, fascist Italy of Mussolini and to that Japan joined. So it was very clear that from Japan's side, that means towards eastern side of India, Japan is going to make attack. And how far Japanese army can infiltrate. So idea was that, that may be possible they can reach till Myanmar also. That was already known to Britishers. And therefore they separated Myanmar as a separate nation. And so it should not consider that Japanese attacked over India. and. Uh, part of India is under control of Japan. So for that purpose, they separated Myanmar from India. I don't know what about Sri Lanka exactly, but uh, these partitions created a lot of problem. Uh, you are aware that uh, Tamilians, those who are staying in Sri Lanka at that time, because it was part of India only. So they were not crossing out nation. They were there in the Sri Lanka. The issues created because of this type of partition. Anyway, we are not going to discuss that right now. But these things were there. Uh, now, 
Britishers, if at all wanted to leave India, then they wanted to make as many as pieces of India possible. And for that purpose, they made a fragment uh, that is Bombay Presidency from that Sindh territory was separated, Northwest Frontier region was separated, and like that, many things were carried out during that period so that maximum provinces should be there in India. Uh, now, India was divided as we discussed in earlier lecture. India was divided into two parts, provinces, that is direct under British control, and uh, princely states, that is indirect under British control. So, uh, they are directly under British control, but not direct British rule was there in princely state. So, like that, they were having some uh, separation of India. They wanted to create Pakistan. Pakistan, we can say a dream child of British ideology. It is nothing to do with Jinnah, Mahatma Gandhi or even Nehru. That was brainchild from British, uh, we can say at that time intelligence was there. Because in future, it was very clear that Russia, at that time USSR was going to invade Afghanistan. To the eastern side of Afghanistan, there is India. To the western side of Afghanistan, there is Iran. Iran is dominated by Shia Muslims. And that's why it was obvious that Iran will not help Afghanistan because Afghanistan was dominated by Sunni people. And therefore, Britishers wanted or American strategy wanted that there should be a nation which should consider maximum population of Sunni Muslims. And then with help of them, we can help Afghanistan. So like that strategies were carried out at that time. And so in order to get that, they separated Northwest Frontier region, uh, they separated Sindh territory and they were planning. Now, after that, what are the main planning? Uh, planning? Uh, they given more power to what newly created or whatever the provinces. The provincial government, that means we can consider it as literally what was demanded in Nehru report, that is dominion status. So almost very good dominion status was given by Britishers during this. Uh, there were now they maintain a central government that is central list and federal list, uh, provincial list. Central list means uh, federal list. Uh, they consider India as a federation. Federation means what? Smaller states are going to unite forming single nation. So like that federation. So they uh, created a federal list for center uh, which 59 items were there in federal list. Whereas provincial list with 54 atoms, whereas the concurrent list that was consisting of uh, powers of both uh, of 36 atoms. Now, the residuary powers were given to Viceroy. However, the thing is that this type of federation was not at all able to exist. Only provincial government was carried out during his part because Britishers. Uh, in Hindi, we can say that Bhagavan ke ghar mein der hai, andher nahi hai. There is delay in God's house, but not deny. So, like that, Britishers were there. For us, they were like a god only. And uh, they given this act in 1935, but practically implemented in 1937. Try to recollect. 1919 act was also like that only. That they given in 1919 but practically implemented in 1921. So here also same thing happened given in 1935, but implemented in 1937. And within two years of very good batting from Indian side, all of a sudden that uh, government came to end because of beginning of World War. And without consulting with Indians, Britishers declared that India will participate from British side. And for that purpose, uh, this government resigned and this 1939 uh, that was discontinued. Now, uh, provinces were given fantastic things. Say, for example, as we discussed their own budget, then act introduced re uh, for responsible government in provinces. Uh, that is, governor required to act with advice of ministers responsible to provincial legislature. Now, 
uh, this provided adaptation of diarchy at the center so as we discussed in earlier lecture that there was introduction of diarchy uh, diarchy during princely state uh, sorry princely state and provincial government but now they abolished from provincial government and kept it at central government it introduced bicameral legislature that is bicameralism bicameralism means what two houses like we discussed that in india the uh, central government they carried out this bicameralism that is upper house and lower house so same thing they carried out in six out of 11 provinces so today also bicameralism is not there in all states in india uh, many states they have but many states uh, states they don't have but uh, they introduce here uh, legislative council that is upper house and legislative assembly that is lower house but many restrictions were there on them now it extended uh, further the principle of communal representation now this was intentionally carried out by britishers again and again because they wanted to divide and rule no doubt uh, it was not beginning of world war the results were not clear but yet they were having the chance that if we got victory then we have to rule over india for many centuries and for that purpose they carried out this thing that is communal representation uh, should be there the communal representation provided for depressed classes that is we are calling as scheduled caste then women and labor also now it abolished council of india established by government of india act of 19, uh, 1858 the secretary of state for india was provided with team of advisors it extended franchise that means uh, in earlier days very few people were having right of voting now the right of voting was increased and nearly 10 percent of total population got voting right so it was not at that time like today we have adult franchising that means uh, if your 21 years are completed then you are eligible for voting initially this was the thing in latter phase they said that okay 18 years completed then you are eligible for voting so like that uh, things were not there uh, at that time now uh, it provided establishment of reserve bank of india to control currency and credit of the country so this is something again we can say this is new planning uh, we are saying this is decentralization of power and a little bit they are giving us relaxation or they were sending us towards dominion status now uh, it provided for establishment of federal public service commission try to recollect that initially uh, this uh, public service commission uh, whatsoever that they were conducting exam that is ICS exam they were conducted in England then we demanded that these exams should be there in India and uh, ultimately in 1922 these exams were conducted in India first time that is at Prayagraj or Allahabad in those days at that time uh, today we are calling as Prayagraj but later on they say that this type of public service commission should be set up so they were having two public service commission that is federal as well as uh, provincial public service commission and sometime joint public service commission also for two or more provinces at a time then it was provided for establishment of federal court which was set up in 1937 so in short this is uh, what we are discussing about uh, government of india uh, act that is of 1935 now what is the outcome of this act out of 11 provinces eight provinces were having absolute majority towards congress party whereas in three provinces no party was able to gain majority and then with help of congress or some other party government was set up this way uh, in these elections it was clear swipe off for other parties uh, in fact uh, to the surprise but muslim league secured only one seat in punjab territory 
this is the most amazing thing that uh, Muslim League later on demanded for Pakistan. But at that time, what is today's major Pakistan? Today's major Pakistan is obviously dominated by Punjabi people. But at that time, Punjab was dominate. Uh, Punjab was giving only one seat to Barrister Jinnah, that is to Muslim League. So this clearly indicate that whatever the Barrister Jinnah is going to say, but in the provincial government, the local people were not at all in favour of Muslim League in Punjab territory. Instead of that, there was a party named as Unionist Party and they got clear-cut majority and they were having government over there. So this way, some strange things are there, but you can study out exactly uh, election details of that 1937 and you will get strange data. But uh, you have to check yourself. So this is the outcome. Then we run this government for two years. We means Indians. The government was in hands of Indians. And uh, initially we were having fear that uh, governors, those who are there, they will try to create some obstacles in our work. But all of a sudden, it was nice thing. Hitler was there in Germany. Impact was so high that the governors uh, were having in parental mode. They started guiding us that you have to use this type of language, you have to put forward this way. They were helping us. Literally, they were training us to rule over India. Fantastic thing was there that achieved by 1935 Act. But the again, keep in mind, everything was going for only and only one reason that Hitler was there in Germany. He was taking world towards world war. His all preparations, whatsoever the great preparation you can call, but that all preparations were taking uh, this Europe towards a war. And in that war, Britishers were aware that Indian help is essential. In First World War, because of Indian help, forcefully, but Britishers got victory. Now, after uh, uh, so many years, Indians were not ready to help, particularly Gandhiji. He was saying that war is violence and how I can say that uh, we have to help violent act. So, now we, if Gandhiji is not telling, then what is the impact on Indian? And then uh, Britishers were wanted that, yes, we want army from India. We want resources from India. And for that purpose, they made this law as a liberal. They were showing that how liberal we are. And anyway, Indians were definitely benefited by certain provisions of this act. Ultimately, Nehru report was demanding what? That was almost all fulfilled, not 100%, but to great extent, it was fulfilled by this 1935 act. But uh, bad point, the partitions of India, already we shrinked out our uh, map of India during British rule only. That is very bad point from Indian side. Anyway, uh, thanks for observing this video. The next lecture we are going to discuss about Mount Patton plan and uh, then we have to discuss about establishment of constitution committee and then onwards we are discussing about constitution. So this is I am just creating a background for discussion about constitution. So all these lectures, what we started from first lecture till one more lecture, I hope that uh, is required. They are there for making just base background of the constitution. Thanks for observing this video.